Hello everyone, NetFQ here again. Um, this is going to be part two of our um, planetary interaction um, where we're um, going to set up a planet so we can produce some coolant. Um, now last time you saw that um, I set up some planets to harvest some water and um, as you can see they are currently producing quite a bit of water. Um, our reserve storage facility is just about just about got maxed out so there's plenty of um, water so we can process and currently I've got one two one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten processing facilities which is uh, processing that um, liquid into water and the CPU is currently at 93 percent which so it's um just about full I, I cannot add any more um processing um facilities because there's not enough power so i've got 10 there and it's um producing it and um i've set up another planet with the same thing producing water and as you can see it's just over half full the storage facility and again it's um extracting aqueous liquids and um, converting them into water. Now I've already um, gone around the two planets and collected the water hence why there's not much in there. Um, I've already, I've already um, got the water out probably about I don't know, 12 hours ago or less than that, probably 6 hours ago. Um, so they're happily doing their thing, so that's my water sorted out. And um, as I explained yesterday, um, I've got some alt characters as well, mining other PI stuff, um, namely toxic metals, um, reactive metals, precious metals, oxygen, electrolytes, and um, turtle um, structures. Don't know if I pronounced that right or not. So um, what we'll be doing now is we'll be um, putting some structures on a planet and we'll be converting um, water and electrolytes into um, coolant. So first thing we need to do is we need to find a planet that we can use for this. Um, and again, we want a quite a small planet because if we choose a big planet, we're going to have that issue with the, um, the links between the different modules. Um, they're going to be long and they take up CPU and, and power, so I um, power and um, electricity. Um, so we don't want that. No, sorry, not power and electricity, power and CPU. So we don't want that. So we want to choose a small planet. Um, now, small planets are obviously going to be your barons and your temperate. Um, I've just scanned these two um, barren planets and they have some stuff that I might want to mine at a later stage so I don't want to put um, um, a um, advanced facility down on these planets um, same with the plasma planet um, but there is this temperate planet here and um, so I'm going to be using that um, so first things I need to do is um, get a temperate command module and stick it into my spaceship so we'll just quickly do that and we'll just go and on dock. And we'll stop our ship. So we're still tethered because we want to stay tethered just in case any um, bad guys come in system. And then we want to go into planetary mode. Uh, view and planet mode of that um, temperate planet. Right, so there it is. Now we don't need to scan this planet because it doesn't care where we put these um, advanced industrial facilities down. It, it just doesn't doesn't make any difference at all. Um, but yeah, you know, doesn't really matter if you put it in water or on land. But I think it just look better if we put it on land. Um, to be perfectly honest. Um, to stay with the um, the theme um, so let's have a look so that is 
Yeah, let's just put it there. How about that? Right, so, command center, down, boom. Great. Now, we're going to have to have um, two spaceports. Well, I like putting two spaceports down, um, simply because we've got two different um, components we're needing to get onto the planet's surface. Um, and um, and those then obviously need to go to storage facilities that the um, advanced um, processes can can use to um, to create the coolant. So what I'll do first is um, I will put a spaceport down. It doesn't have to be next to um, the command control um, center, um, but what I do need to do actually first is um, I need to upgrade it, otherwise we can't put anything on the surface and then that's going to defeat the purpose. So I've just updated, uh, so I upgraded that to level 6. So we've got max power and uh, max CPU. And now what I'll do is I'll put a launch pad down. I'll put a launch pad down here somewhere. Done. And then I am going to put a storage facility down here as well. So I'll just put on just something like that and link them together. So we can say this storage facility is going to contain our electrolytes. Um, which is fine, fantastic. So the next thing we need to do is put another storage facility down. So I, um, another spaceport down. And I'll tell you why I do this. It's all to do with the delay involved in transferring um, items um, between different um, structures or facilities. Um, I'll show you. Um, I'll show you that a bit later on. And I'll put another storage facility there. All right. So let's assume that our electrolytes are in that one and our water is in that one. Next thing we need to do is we need to um, process them somehow. Um, so actually I'll just link these together like that. Um, so what we need to do is we need to go into processes. Now it's not going to be the basic one. It's going to be the advanced industry that we want. So we put one of these down. Let's stick it up here out of the way. And we'll quickly link that to there. All right. So if you have a look at this, we can go into schematics. It's exactly the same as the basic one, except um, these are a bit more advanced schematics. And if we scroll down to coolant, we've got it here. And um, the details of which are saying that the input is 40 electrolytes, and the input number two is 40 water. So 40 electrolytes and 40 water, when they're um, processed together, the output is going to be um, five coolant units. So that's what we want. So if we install that, and again, it's going to say, where do you want the coolant sent? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a link back to the, um, the spaceport or the launch pad. Okay, so what I am going to do is I'm actually going to do three of these on this side, and then I'll do three on this side, okay, and I'll all link them like that. Done. So this side coolant, coolant, create link, done. Coolant, coolant, create link, coolant. 
create link and all go into the same um, uh, launch pad because it's one output they can all go to the same launch pad and one more over here same launch pad All right as you can see they look a bit better sorry they look a bit different than the basic ones um, as you can see the orange um, line around the sorry, the circumference um, it's split into two halves um, that's um, indicating that there are two separate materials that are required for this um, processing facility to, to start up or industry facility to start up um, now it's quite tricky now because we can't actually link anything because it doesn't know what's going to go into here so in order to set these up ie to actually tell it where the inputs are um, we need to um, have our um, water and um, electrolytes actually in these storage facilities um, so we can route them so as you can see the inputs it needs 40 water and um, 40 electrolytes which it currently doesn't have and there's no way for us to route it because um, remember before when we set up the extractor unit um, even though it hadn't actually finished its cycle we could still um, route or route um, the output components even though they hadn't been created yet because it knew that they were incoming but in um, this instance um, there is no way to tell it that yes yeah there are incoming components so you know we can't pre-route them so to speak so what I need to do is I need to go back to um, my um, station Docking request accepted. which we'll do now and we'll dock up and now we need to take these components to that planet so let's just take 10,000 of each so we'll take 10,000 water uh, actually I won't use that ship I will actually use a a proper PI ship an ethyl now an Ipthel, can't pronounce it, I'm hopeless with names. <laughs> so 10,000 water and we'll take 10,000 electrolytes just to get ourselves going. There we go, stick them in the cargo hold. So that's that done. Remember for each process we only need 40 each, so that's, that'll last a while. Um, so let's undock. and just check local make sure there's no bad guys in there which there aren't so that's fantastic and we will warp to the customs office you can see that down there we'll put it up here there's our planet planet colonies tab um, we can right click on the planet we want and because we're in the same solar system the same system we can go customs office warp within zero so that's what I'll do. Warp drive active. And away we go. And we've got our electrolytes and water and the cargo hold. Or the planetary commodities cargo hold. And away we go. don't really want to get ganked in um, a ship like this because the um, hull is paper thin has no shields and paper thin hull right so we're now at the customs office and we've got some lances around these things are harmless as long as you don't attack them they won't attack you so we'll just ignore them for now just makes the um, customs office looks a bit funky as they scan it Right, so what we'll do is we'll go back to our P 
planetary colonies we'll right click again the planet go to customs office and we will say access customs office and that'll bring up this view here so remember I put two spaceports down so we can select which spaceport we want this one or that one so let's just do the first one I'll put the electrolytes in there drag and drop then drag them over to the other side so to put 10,000 down it's going to cost me 10,000 ISK which is not that bad so transfer down boom so that's now gone into that um, launch pad on the surface so if we go to the other, the other one now and I do the same thing with the water drag it up and then drag it over and then transfer it down to the planet so now we've got water in one storage pad so a launch pad and then we've got electrolytes in the other storage pad so that's done so that's all we need to do so now what I can do is I can walk back to the safety of the um, citadel so that's what I'll do now Right, I'm in warp, so now I can go to the planet again, right click on it, and say view in planet mode. Right, now as you can see, our two launch pads are just about half full. And one has electrolytes, and the other one has water, which is exactly what we want. So now what we want to do is we need to go into our... Um, launch pad electrolytes and we need to expedite transfer and what we want to say is select transfer destination we want to go into this storage facility here so if we drag it over and say execute and there we go so they're now in my storage facility where I want them and I'll do exactly the same for the water I can expedite I can select the other storage facility, drag it over and execute that and now it's moved there. Now the reason why I use two launch pads is for the simple reason if I click on it now I can't transfer anything out of it for the next three hours and one minute um, which is ridiculous so if I put both the um, electrolytes and water in the same um, launch pad and I try to um, you know send them or, or transfer them to there and there I couldn't I'd have to send um, half to one and then wait and then send half to the other there are ways around that but um, just to just because I've got enough power I, I, I have enough um, you know I've got enough power and reserve that I can have two launch pads and then I don't have to get into the situation where um, I have to wait to transfer things between um, facilities um, it just makes it easier for me um, especially the fact that if I filled each one up to the brim with um, the, the components required um, then it would be easy for me um, to keep these full all the time without having to wait for any transfer windows to expire before I can top them up again but anyway so now we've got the components that we need which is fantastic um, I can then click on the first one which is the electrolytes and I can go here to where they are in here and I can say create route and what I want to do is I want to create a route to each of these advanced um, advanced processing um, facilities so let me just go ahead and do that there we go All right so now you can see um, one half of the circles is um, 
a lighter orange than the other half that means that it has a hundred percent of the one type of um, component or item that it needs so it's just missing the other half so if we do the, exactly the, the same thing with the water create a root to each one of them And there you go, so submit that. Right, as you can see they've actually stopped blinking. That's what we want to see. That means they're actually doing what they're supposed to be doing. So each um, production cycle is a lot longer than the basic one. The basic one was only 30 uh, minutes. Um, for the advanced industry facilities it takes an hour. So in an hour's time we will have five units of coolant which will be transferred to our launch pad ready for us to collect but the great thing about this is as you can see the storage facilities um, are not even half full so what I can do is in yeah you know, within well just over three hours I can come along again and then top each one up I can um, you know use the two launch pads for the two components and just um, top them up and what you will find is um, once these are topped up I'll, um, I'll then think about putting some more of these um, advanced um, processing sorry the advanced industrial facilities down to um, produce more because currently that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 so I'll get 30 coolants every hour so if I double that it'll be 60 coolants every hour and um, you do the maths but the great thing about it is because I have my upgrade at level 6 I'm only using 37.7% power so that's nothing so I can produce a lot more I can sorry I can put down a lot more of these advanced industrial facilities um, at least double the amount plus more um, which will tremendously you know will, um, definitely speed up production of, of the coolant that I need so that's what I'll do um, so I'll just let this go in. I'll I'll wait, you know, until probably tomorrow. I'll come along and just top up the two um, storage facilities, and then create um, eight more. Sorry, um, so, sorry, six more. And um, yeah, see how we go. Um, but obviously, the more you have, the um, more frequently you're going to have to come along to top up the two storage um, facilities. Um, because the yeah, the more you have, the the more resources are going to use, and the faster it's going to go down. Um, but obviously, the upside of that is you're going to produce more coolant. So it just depends on how much work you want to put into it, and um, and how much coolant you actually want per day. Um, but yeah, just leave that ticking over. As I said, that's currently going to produce um, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty coolant an hour. So what's that? That is Come on guys, what's 30 times 24? That's going to be 720 a day. May not seem that much, but you know, that's a start. Again, as I said, I'll I'll double the amount of storage facilities I've got. So, yeah, that's going to be a lot more. That's going to be, what, 1,440? Um, something like that. So that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, this is how you set up, or this is how I set up um, advanced industry facilities, um, just producing um, coolant 
by processing water and electrolytes together and we create coolant quick and easy to do um, again there are many ways you can set these up I just like it this way I just like two spaceports and two um, storage facilities just to keep things separate so I know exactly how much of each component that I've got just visually looking at it I can see that you know both electrolytes and coolant are at the same level so I don't need to bring you know more of one component when I come along and, and top this up I can see exactly how much you know exactly what's going on and obviously once all the components are created it's going to be this um, launch pad that's going to store the um, the items um, it just means if I want to get the maximum um, um, electrolytes or water down to the planet I'm just going to have to um, get the um, the coolant off the planet first put that in my hold then I can send the um, the other items down to the planet just to maximize the, the amount of stuff I can stick in here because this is only um, what is this 10,000 m3 of storage in, in a typical launch pad um, so that's it guys hope you enjoyed this quick video again this is a lot um, a lot shorter than the other PI video I've done um, just because there's, there's not a lot involved we don't have to scan anything we don't have to worry about um, you know extractor control units and extractor heads and you know scanning down deposits um, all we're doing is just sticking some stuff down just to process um, two two materials and um, producing an output so that's it hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you on the next one bye for now